Hello everybody, my name is Mason Zero ASMR, and welcome to this week's video. Today we're going to be doing ASMR tag. So ASMR tag, if you haven't seen it, has been going around this week, started by Jibby ASMR, I believe, and basically it's 25 questions about ASMR, and you can tag people. I think it just originated from Jibby. She tags some people, they tag some people, they tag some people, and so on. I was tagged by Miss Wisp ASMR, and I am excited to make this video. So I have for me a sheet with 25 questions on it. I jotted down notes for a few of them, but for the most part, this will be kind of off the cuff. Um, yeah, before I start, I just want to say, if you're not following me on Twitter, go ahead and check out the link in the description and follow me there because I post there a lot and you can get kind of behind the scenes and updates and stuff like that. And I love talking to you guys. Feel free to send me a message anytime, talk about ASMR, other stuff, whatever. So let's get started. Question number one. When was the first time you experienced ASMR? Now, I don't know what the first time technically was, but I do have one vivid memory early on of experiencing ASMR. And I think it was similar to a lot of people. It was when I was young, I was probably seven or eight when this specific memory happened. Actually, I think I was, I think I was eight, maybe even nine, um, but it was in third or fourth grade and I was in class and we were taking a test or doing something silent. Um, so there was no sound, just the writing of pencils, which was slightly ASMR triggering. But what really did it for me was when someone had a question and they quietly called the teacher over and then when the teacher conversed uh, quietly across the room and I couldn't understand what they were saying, but it was just this sort of unintelligible distant whisper amidst the silence and the sound of pencils. And I... I felt the tingles from that. That's the first time I remember feeling ASMR tingles. And that sort of situation, I would always look out for it. It didn't happen a ton throughout the rest of my life in school and stuff, but I was always keeping my eye out for that exact scenario. <laughs> then when was the first time you watched ASMR on YouTube? Um, so I didn't know what ASMR was. And then I googled, no, I searched on YouTube for relaxing audio, just because I was looking for something to help me fall asleep. I think it was during college. And um, I was watching other relaxing stuff before I found the ASMR, but I'm pretty sure that the first thing I found was gentle whispering, which was a lot of people's introduction to ASMR. I think that was actually in 2013, possibly. Yeah, 2013 sounds right. Um, I think it was the summer before my junior year of college. I'm pretty sure that I discovered ASMR. And yeah, I, I didn't get super into it at first. I watched Gentle Whispering and then I found Heather Feather and probably a couple other bigger ones from there, but um, I mostly just kept it to those couple few. Um, I think there actually is a question about my favorite ASMR video. Um, actually, maybe there's not. So I will, I will say what my favorite video is, which is, um, it is a video by Gentle Whispering. Uh, I think from possibly 2013, and I forget the exact full title, but it's a uh, gentle hair play or something like that, and she is uh, doing the hair of a friend or something, and 
I'm not sure what it is about that video. I think it's the fact that there's a lot of uh, silence in it, so you'll kind of be half asleep because the video sort of fades out and then suddenly it'll come back and the whisper will return. Not necessarily wake you up, but sort of remind you that you're relaxed. And I don't know, I really like it. I still listen to it every now and then. What's your favorite unintentional ASMR video? Um, I don't have a favorite video per se, but what I found before watching ASMR was a channel that did origami called Happy Folding. And actually, the funny thing is that channel nowadays, for the last few years, has actually been uh, partly an ASMR origami channel. So I find it funny that I went there for ASMR when they weren't particularly aimed at ASMR. But uh, the lady there has an accent. I'm not sure if it's a German accent or something like that, but uh, it's some sort of some sort of European or something accent. I'm not quite sure. And she sort of gently, softly spoke, and I really, really liked it, and it was relaxing. Also interesting, I, I learned some origami from it, and I did it pretty briefly. <laughs> Wasn't good at it, though. Uh, name the last five ASM artists that you watched. I actually watched most of these today or yesterday. Uh, and they are Miss Wisp ASMR, who of course tagged me in this video, uh, Gaslamp ASMR, whose videos I absolutely love. Captain ASMR, who does a lot of Fortnite stuff. Uh, ASMR Gaming News, also does a lot of Fortnite. And uh, and then, of course, Gentle Whispering, who always makes great, high-quality content. And, yeah, those five are the most recent I've listened to, and most of them are ones that I enjoy listening to pretty regularly. I'm always really happy when Miss Wisp or Gaslamp... Um, upload a video, and I also, uh, you know, of the grand scheme of people that I talk to, I definitely consider them the people that I sort of converse with the most, uh, and they're a lot of fun to talk to. What is your favorite ASMR trigger to listen to? That's question number five, and that, that's a tough one, because it really depends on the day. Sometimes certain triggers that I would normally find annoying, I find really pleasing, and it really just depends on what I'm interested in, but I think what I like the most is humming or singing. Um, for some reason, I find this really relaxing. There's a couple of channels that I've subscribed to purely because they upload videos like that. Uh, one of them actually plays guitar and does humming or singing, and I find the whole the guitar or music ASMR pretty interesting because there's relaxing music, but relaxing music, relaxation music, and ASMR are kind of different. Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd say that my favorite channel for that is uh, Hana ASMR, I think is the channel name. She does some great, great stuff in that sort of genre. What is your least favorite trigger to listen to? Do it. So I actually have to do this trigger, and I'm not really sure how I can, and maybe I sort of already am, but uh, that would be tense whispering, and I'm not quite sure if that's the right way to describe it, but sometimes when I'm doing whispering in my videos, I get kind of tired, and which is why I do soft speaking in a lot of them. It almost sort of sounds tense or strained almost. Um... So I, I would say that tense whispering is tough. Now let me, let me see if I can do an example of that. Hey guys, this is tense whispering. I am whispering right now and I'm trying to whisper fast and ramble and it's kind of stressful, but also relaxing for some people, but not all the time for me. Uh, I don't know if that was a great example, but that's, that's close enough. I think you guys probably know what I mean. Um, yeah. Do you use ASMR to relax or fall asleep? I used to use ASMR to fall asleep, but I haven't used it for the last couple years. 
to do that. Um, pretty much when I moved in with my girlfriend, I stopped using ASMR to fall asleep. Um, I do still use it to relax, though. Almost every day at work for the last couple of years, I've had ASMR on in the background for at least part of the day. Um, it really helps me focus, which is funny because before I fell or before I got into ASMR, I actually used heavy metal as my way of focusing at work, and I still do that sometimes. But ASMR, definitely, I do occasionally use ASMR to fall asleep if I'm really not tired at all, but most of the time I don't have much trouble falling asleep these days. What is your bedtime routine? Uh, well, I actually do have a routine, uh, which is more than some people can say for sure. Uh, every morning I wake up at 7, uh, and this kind of depends on when I start work, but currently I wake up at 7, and I pretty much do lights out by 11 so that I get eight hours of sleep. Um, I can survive off of less, but I'd rather get eight. Uh, at around 10 o'clock at night, I, I and my girlfriend start to get ready for bed. So, you know, uh, brush, brush teeth, change into pajamas, put the cat to sleep, uh, things like that. Um, by that last one, I mean that we lock up our cat in his room at night because he's a little menace and he would destroy things unsupervised. Um, and then usually we read until around 11. Sometimes I'll watch YouTube videos, uh, on our phones or whatever, but, or go on Reddit, but usually, uh, usually we each read and then lights out and we go to sleep. So, you know, it's a routine, but nothing, nothing too crazy. What is your favorite trigger to do? Do it. I think that my favorite trigger, even though I don't do it that often, is blowing into the mic or breathy whispers, which are kind of similar. I don't know necessarily why I like these. I think it's because they sort of feel all-encompassing. Like when you hear uh, mic breathing, it feels big and large and like it's all around you and it just feels warm and fuzzy. So I'll do a little bit of that. Actually, I just realized this windscreen probably is going to block some of that, so let me move that real quick. Hopefully that wasn't too loud or anything. What is your least favorite trigger to do? My least favorite trigger is probably tapping. It's such a common trigger, so it's funny that it's my least favorite, but uh, I find it difficult because I don't always know how it sounds. There's a lot of tapping that, I'm, that I've done that sounds a little too bassy and boomy, and part of that is my microphone's fault. Um, but sometimes I just don't know how it's how it's sounding uh, and it, it does say to do this trigger too so let me find something to tap on that won't be too abrasive perfect we have a coaster Stay hydrated. I think the other reason that I dislike tapping is that <clears throat> I'm never sure about the speed. I always feel like I'm going too fast or too slow or that I don't have enough, enough variety or that I have too much variety and I'm not being consistent enough and I'm not doing it for long enough. So those are the reasons I don't like tapping. <clears throat> How long does it take you to make a video? 
I would say that usually it doesn't actually take that long. I'd say setup is five to ten minutes. Take out all my gear and stuff, set everything up. Uh, filming the video usually only takes as long as the video is, um, and then editing isn't usually too bad. Um, usually editing takes like five minutes, maybe like five to ten minutes. Um, once I put the audio in and edit that and then edit the video, usually I don't have to edit very much. Most of my videos are kind of just one take. I just have to cut off the beginning and the end, sync the audio and video, and add in my intro and outro. So usually not too much. Um, if I film on my phone, which I'm doing right now, I it takes it a little longer because I have to convert the video file with handbrake because uh, iPhone video does a weird thing where it doesn't record at a constant frame rate or something so that so the audio gets out of sync so I have to convert it with a constant frame rate uh, and then it works fine with syncing the audio and that takes quite a while and also runs my CPU at 100% because handbrake is insane um, but it's it's a great tool for that uh, anyways, so then, yeah, editing just takes a few minutes, and exporting takes a few minutes, uploading takes a few minutes. I have 100 megabit per second internet, so uploading is, is pretty quick, even for 15 to 30 minute videos. Uh, and then tags and stuff takes a few minutes. I'd say that most of my videos total are probably within an hour, um, but that, that does depend. A lot of my videos are pretty simple like magic openings and stuff like that, um, and gameplay videos, they're pretty straightforward. Um, I, I kind of feel bad that I don't do very many in-depth videos with lots of props and planning and scripts and stuff. I have some in the works with incomplete scripts, but they're just so much work that I've never bothered. Um, cause while I do have a fair amount of free time, I usually don't have that much free time all in one go. Like, I don't just have four hours of free time most of the time to, to film something. So, eh, I don't know. Excuses, excuses. I do have some more in-depth ones that took longer, but... Anyways, there's my long-winded answer. So, these next two questions I'm going to combine. And they are, have you ever gotten tingles from your own videos? And do you watch your own videos? I do occasionally watch some of my videos. Um... I, especially my Fortnite videos, just to kind of review how I've played, um, but I, I watch some just to kind of see how they, how they look. Um, I should probably watch them before I publish them, but usually I just watch them, watch old ones just to see, um, and I occasionally get tingles from them, but usually not. Um, I think that's the same with most people, but certain sounds help. I, I don't, my voice doesn't really do anything for me. <clears throat> what software do you use to edit? Um, for audio, I use Audacity, which is right there, but kind of blown out so you can't really see it. Um, and it's, it's free and it's easy. Works great for this. For video, I use Adobe Premiere Pro. Um, and it's, it's great. I love it. Obviously, it's overkill for this, but it's... I use it for other things too, so it makes sense. What time of the day do you film? That has varied a lot over time, generally in the late evening. Right now it's early evening, uh, the sun is still shining, all the light in here is natural light, um, but it depends. Um, when I didn't have a job for a while, most of my videos were recorded in the middle of the day or the morning, um, but these days it's usually at night, and my, the early videos I did for my channel were at night. Uh, what is your favorite video that you've made? I've made a lot of videos, and a lot of them I'm not super proud of, they're just fine. Um, I think one of my favorite videos though is probably my Viking runes reading, which is one of my most popular ones, I think it's the second most popular video on my channel. 
Um, and I just liked it because I like videos that go kind of in-depth on interesting things, and that was my video that went in-depth about Viking runes, which was kind of a cool thing, and I think it had good sounds and appealed to a lot of people, which obviously since it got a lot of views, and it was semi-unique, which is also why I like it. Have one of your videos had an unexpected negative fan reaction? No. Um, all my videos are generally either positively received or... Bleh, I don't know. Uh, a lot of my videos don't get any comments, so I don't really know, and I don't think I particularly have a lot of dislikes on anything. Um, I'd say there's some videos that I expected to do well and have a good reaction that kind of just fell short and got like a hundred views and no comments. Um, but no, in, in general, the videos seem to be fine. Uh, next question. What video of yours do you think didn't get the love it deserved? I would... S I sort of have two answers. One of them is one I did like... Uh, six or eight or something months ago that was sort of a business interview. Um, I kind of worked hard on that one. I did more planning for that one than I usually do and uh, kind of put more effort into the triggers and it got a few hundred views, but I was hoping it would be one of my better, um, most viewed videos, but it wasn't. Um, that's okay though. And I would also say any series that I tried to start of reading something. Um, I've tried reading some of the Magic the Gathering stories and some comics that I have and books and stuff, and those series never really took off. All the videos got under 100 views, I think, for the most part, and they were, they were fun and easy to do because it was just reading, and those generally seemed to be semi-popular in the ASMR world, but... They didn't really do as well as I expected. Uh, what's something the audience doesn't know about the behind the scenes of your channel? I'm not really sure if there is an answer to that question. Um, I'm usually pretty transparent and there's nothing weird about my process. Um, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't have an answer to that. It's pretty normal. What's the most absurd request you received from a fan? Unlike a lot of people in the ASMR world, I haven't really gotten any strange requests. Um, part of that is because I'm a guy, so I don't get any of the weird requests that a lot of female ASMR creators get, uh, of course, but I did get one weird one one time. Uh, it was on a video I made a couple years ago going through my vinyl record collection, and the guy messaged me and had this weird idea for a video that was like, it involves smashing records, which doesn't seem like it'd be a good ASMR trigger, uh, nor was something I wanted to do. So I'm not really sure what that was, but yeah, it was weird. And I just, I responded to him once and then he responded back and things got weirder. So I was like, okay, never mind. Do your family and friends know you make ASMR videos? Um, mostly not. My girlfriend obviously knows because I've lived with her for a couple of years and it's kind of hard to hide that. I told her pretty quickly after we moved in. Um, she's usually accommodating. Halfway through this video, she actually got home from work and I had to, had to, uh, take a little break and say hi and tell her I was in the middle of filming. Um, my best friend knows, but he doesn't really know ASMR that well. He just knows I make relaxing videos. And then my other best friend, uh, she knows, but we haven't really talked about it. And I'm pretty sure she uh, watches a bit of ASMR. But I don't think my content would be interesting to her because she's kind of a girly girl, which my content doesn't really cater towards. Um, my family doesn't know, though. And I don't really care to tell them. Um, I don't really want... I mean, they know about some of my YouTube stuff, but generally I don't like sharing that kind of stuff with my family. Um, have you ever been recognized in public? No, I, uh, I am not big enough to be recognized in public, and I don't expect to be. I also don't think I'm that distinctive looking, so I don't think I'd be recognized. 
What inspires your video ideas? Um, I, I don't really know. I don't get too much inspiration. Um, a lot, of, like I said, a lot of my videos are video game gameplay or Magic the Gathering pack opening or reading something. Uh, so generally it's just something that I feel like would be good based on previous videos and what other people have done and what I like. Uh, I don't do too many role plays or more advanced things. Um, but usually it's just stuff that I know that I can pull off and can do well. But I don't get any grand inspiration. I would say most of my ideas are not super amazing. Uh, I do try to find interesting things. One video I enjoyed that got weirdly popular was tapping on a basketball. Um, maybe just because it was kind of unique, but that's actually one of my more popular videos. Where do you find yourself spending the most time online? Uh, I definitely spend a lot of time on YouTube watching videos, whether it's ASMR or otherwise. Uh, other than that, I spend a lot of time on Reddit. Also Facebook, but not much really happens on Facebook. I kind of go in waves of spending time on Twitter, um, but I try to spend more time on there. But yeah, Reddit gets a lot of my attention. And the last question is, what advice would you give someone who wanted to make their own ASMR content? I actually do have a video um, about this, and I'll, I'll link it in the description and maybe at the end as well. That's a non-ASMR video, but it's all about how to get your ASMR content seen on YouTube using pretty standard, like, marketing stuff. Uh, I have a marketing degree, and I do marketing for a living, and I am currently the head marketer of a startup, and um, so I know this stuff. I've been on YouTube for a while. Um, so anyways, my sort of cliff notes of, uh, of what I would say to someone who wanted to make their own ASMR channel and content is to, first of all, do it. Just do it. Take the plunge. Start making videos. Um, at the beginning, I would say make as many as possible. When I first started, I was doing one every two days, I think, and then eventually I settled into doing about one a week. Um, actually, I did two a week, and then I've cut back down to one a week um, for the last like year. And um, so I would say start off doing a whole bunch because people need to see you they need to see your content. Um, the more stuff you have, the more impressive your channel will look. Also, it's good just to do a lot of stuff, see what you like, see what you don't like, and see what people like and don't like. Um, the other thing I would say is do what you enjoy and do what you love. Don't do something just because other people are doing it or because it's popular, unless it's something that you enjoy making. So my channel started doing Magic the Gathering stuff because I was just getting into Magic the Gathering. I was really enjoying opening up packs and stuff like that. So that was a lot of the stuff I did early on because it made me happy and I thought it made good ASMR content. So definitely just do what you enjoy, um, whether it's following the trends or not. If you do like the things that are popular, then feel free to do those things. Um, but yeah, I think no matter what you're doing, ASMR or otherwise on YouTube, you have to be genuine and do what you enjoy because it becomes pretty obvious when you're doing something that you don't care about and people really resonate with that. So definitely do what you love. So that is all five uh, questions. Or all 25 questions, sorry. Uh, and now it's my turn to tag people. And I realize now that I should have written that down before. Um, <laughs> So I am going to tag a few people, and I, I don't know if these people have already been tagged. Uh, if you have, I am sorry. <laughs> so the people I'm going to tag for the ASMR tag is ASMR Gaming News, ASMR Richard, and honestly, I, I can't think of anybody else who hasn't already been tagged. This thing has been pretty popular. So I'm just going to tag those two people. Uh, at the moment, if I do think of anyone else between the time of filming this video and uploading it, I will be sure to tag those people on Twitter and mention them in the comments. Uh, but as of now, those are the only people I can think of that I have not currently seen an ASMR tag video from. 
Uh, so have fun, you guys. Um, would love to see your guys' answers to these questions. Thank you all for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Um, most of my videos, the camera is facing the other direction, so it's cool to be looking at my face this time. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, and I will see you all in the next one. Have a great day or night. Goodbye.